Today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by Coach Me Plus. Coach Me Plus is the leader in athlete management software and a product that we've been lucky enough to implement here for over two years now. The product in and of itself is exactly what you need it to be, guys, with options ranging from being a workout provider, as in sending the workout directly to the student athlete's phones, to being a place where you can communicate with them and bring together multiple streams of data to be its own dashboard for you, your coaching staff, or the athletes. Or you can use what we've added to our our menu of Coach Me Plus activities, and that's Hydration Station, where all of this information that is provided is based off of research from the Corey Stringer Institute, where we're looking at weighing in versus weighing out and then providing optimal hydration uh, strategies for the student athletes by them selecting through the menu and tapping on what they'll take home with them and what they're consuming prior to the next practice um, when all the numbers at the top are lined up green. It's something we've had really good success with and the kids have really bought in on. Just another great example of the awesome product that you can find at coachmeplus.com. Guys, hop over to coachmeplus.com today and check it out. It's a product I guarantee you won't be disappointed with. Hey everybody, if you enjoy the podcast and the content it provides, be sure to hop over and check out the community. The community is an exclusive members website that is just an extension of what we do here in July at the Central Virginia Sport Performance Seminar. What it is is a combination of video lectures, a coach's corner with your Monday morning take-home information, and a forum where you can talk about anything and everything related to the field of strength and conditioning. In the community, you'll find content added each month from some of the top practitioners in the world ranging from PhDs to high-level coaches, bringing you exactly what they're doing with their athletes or their research at the present moment. On top of that, an additional discussion by coaches bringing you that Monday morning information, things that you can add to your training program right away. Tying that in with the opportunity to discuss with coaches around the world in the forum on anything and everything from the topics addressed in these presentations to whatever you're seeing in your daily life as a coach. If this sounds like the right thing for you and your staff, Go ahead and hop over to cvasps.com slash community and try it out for 48 hours for just a dollar. If you like it, you're signed up, ready to roll, and you're jumping into all the great content added each month. If not, feel free to go ahead and cancel at any time. No questions asked. We're really excited about what we're building in the community and hope you are too. Go ahead and hop over to cvasps.com slash community and check it out today. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Today, guys, I have the pleasure of sitting down with Plays Ron McKeefrey to talk about his travels and the lessons he's learned along the way. And, uh, you know, Max starts right out giving us the, the details about why he got in with play and what he found so appealing to the job. And, and that leads us right into, you know, his travels throughout the world and, you know, what he sees when it comes to strength and conditioning and you know, which parts of the world are, are kind of leading the way in different aspects of it, whether it be, you know, monitoring or, or motivation or the actual science behind it. You know, when he talks about who's learning from who and how each section of the world is, is kind of evolving as we move forward. Uh, you know, and then we get into, you know, really how this has all made him a better coach and, and what he has seen in his world travels that that have led him to be a much better coach and a better teacher and a, and a better learner. This is really a fantastic talk, guys. I, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Let's get right to it. Mac, it's been a long time coming, brother. I am stoked to have you on the show today, my friend. Uh, I'm fired up, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate all you do. And, and uh, you know, you putting this out every week or even more t- a couple times a week is – I mean, we're all benefiting, so thanks so much, man. Well, I appreciate that, man. Coming from you, that means that means a ton, brother. Been a been an Iron Game Chalk Talk subscriber since shoot, <laughs> five digit, years now. Yeah, single digit episodes, and I can't believe wow. it, man. It's it's awesome. So, what I think would be a cool show is to sit here, um, one, and share your travels, and two, let let's get Max fifteen thousand foot view no pun intended, based on all your travel, of what's going on in the profession, not just in the States, but in Europe, because you were just there, in Australia, because you've been there recently, China and back, like, six times in the last six months, you know, like, what what do you see, Mac? Where are we going? What's, what's it looking like? 
Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, it's a major reason why I took this role, you know, with play. And, um, you know, I mean, uh, you know, here I was, um, you know, I was working with 105 football players every semester and, or every year. And I love every second of my job, but I also felt called to kind of be able to impact more than 105 people every year, you know, and, and I, and I also realized that I enjoyed coaching the coaches as much as I've enjoyed coaching the athletes, you know, and, and, and so this job allows me to do both. I'm still working with elite teams. I'm still working with elite athletes, but I'm doing it around the world. And you know, that was important to me because, you know, early in my career, I got the, the chance to be uh, a straight, the head strength coach for the Berlin Thunder of NFL Europe. You know, it was the first time that I'd ever been out of the country. And so, you know, to, to go to Germany and to see, you know, this place that we'd seen, you know, kind of growing up in the 80s, you know, Berlin Wall and the whole deal. And, and to see that it really wasn't that much different, you know, or, um, you know, and that there's, there, you know, there's cool people there, just like there's cool people everywhere. And, and that you can learn and grow and experience new cultures and new, you know, uh, diverse populations and the whole deal uh and then go on to you know we adopted our our three kids from ukraine and we adopted another from honduras um you know the world became really really small to me and so fortunately in the last year i've been able to walk on the great wall of china walk over the sydney harbor bridge you know be on the cliffs of moore in ireland um beyond you know niagara falls in canada and and poland and be in the christmas market in poland i mean it's been I've gotten the opportunity to do a lot of things that are incredible. Um, but along that journey, to your point, I've been able to see strength and conditioning being done a lot of different ways. And, um, you know, I think there's more similar similarities than there are differences. I think that that's, you know, I think, I think if I was making some generalizations, I think, um, in the U S we do a phenomenal job with the art of coaching, you know, getting people to run through a brick wall and then come back and pick up the pieces. I mean, that's something that, you know, I think we're, we're some of the best in the world at, um, I think in the UK and Australia and, and, and some of the, you know, other countries, I think they're doing such a, a much better job of allowing science to drive their training, you know, and they're not, they're not held by the same stigma. I think their coaches are more educated. Their sport coaches are more educated because they're more educated it becomes a more of a, a, a collaboration amongst, you know, the sports scientists, the head coach, the strength coach, the high performance director. Um, if I'm being critical and, and extremely honest, I think they're doing a much better job of learning the art of coaching than we are learning the science. And uh, I think that's where we need to we need to do a better job of growing um, in our country, which starts with educating our coaches and 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 trying to provide more structured education system for our, our sport coaches. You know, I mean, we're, everybody's talking about how the, the, what certification the strength coach has to have. There's nothing that exists to be a football coach or a basketball coach or, you know, wrestling coach, whatever it may be. I mean, where's their certifications and where's their education coming from? You know, most of them are coming from, you know, God knows what, you know, and then all of a sudden getting out there and, and making decisions and, and, and being in charge of, of people like us that are highly educated in what we do. You know, and so I, I think we got to do a better job there. Um, but I think that there's, you know, I think the to your point earlier, um, you doing this show, me doing my podcast, me traveling like I have, I've grown so much as a strength coach by learning from others and exposing myself to how, you know, a soccer strength coach in the UK is work, you know, is designing their programs based bit compared to the approach that I take in designing a football program or you know, a rugby program or whatever. I think that, you know, we have a lot to, to learn from the rest of the world. No, a hundred percent. And it sounds like though, that the world is kind of sticking their head around the corner and learning from us a little bit more than we are from them. Yeah. I think there's, I mean, you know, there's no question in the U S that we do. I mean, we provide so many more resources to sport in this country, be it, you know, the secondary school system or, you know, collegiate athletic NCAA system or even in professional sport, you know, where we're able to do it. I mean, a lot of these countries, I mean, there's there's no organized sport other than pro, you know, and, and then you, you know, it's, you, you might get into an academy system if you're if you're lucky. But, 
you know, it's, it's a long journey and it's hard to do. And, and so I think they're looking to us because we have so many resources and just like, you know, just like anything, I guess, in this world, when you look to where money is, you know, you assume that there's quality education and quality, you know, um, training and all those types of things. And there is, I mean, we got coaches doing phenomenal things that can, that can, you know, coach with the best uh, everywhere. But we also have, you know, I mean, I, you know, I was, I would speak at conferences and earlier in my career and, you know, somebody would get up and say, well, you know, this is what we do. We do, you know, front squat and then we do back squat and then we do whatever. And I'm like, okay, cool. Well, why, why do you do it that way? Well, I don't know. That's just what so-and-so did, you know, and, it, and it's, we got to do a better job of answering the why as to what we're doing, having an understanding of it, being able to explain the science. And uh, I think that that's something that uh, I challenge myself on on a daily basis to improve on, uh, you know, and, um, and when I, when I do make these travels, you know, I, I, sometimes I sit in those rooms and I'm like, God dang, I'm, I'm this, I'm the dumbest guy in the room, you know? And I think that they would, you know, those coaches would come over and see how we are able to motivate a freaking six foot eight, 400 pound defense alignment and, and say, Holy crap. How does that, how does it, how do you can do, how can you do that? You know, um, I think it's, I mean, we didn't continue to blend those two. Now, do you feel that that's something that could be a one-person job? Or do you think that that may be something that may be more suited? Mac takes over at School S, and he says, we know that, that Mac can, can get these kids to go run through a wall. Would that be something where you would say, you need to be better at the science end, or would you feel that would be something that would be better to bring someone in that would like take those buckets and help you along with them? Yeah, I think that's, you know, that's kind of, I've talked about this on my show where, you know, should we be in kind of the high performance model where we're, where, you know, we have a, a director that leads the whole thing that builds the pieces and has a, somebody that's strength and power and somebody at speed and somebody that's psychology and nutrition and, and all those things. And I, I, I mean, I think that's where we're headed, um, to some degree. Um, that said, I mean, you and I both know that you could write the very best program on paper, but if you can't get somebody to do it, it doesn't mean Jack, you know, and ultimately I'll, I will take a coach over, you know, you know, so, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've had to throw the physiology textbook out the window you know, to, to either, you know, to get somebody to buy in or, 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 um, understand. And I think there's a lot of things that are still unexplained. I mean, I think, you know, winning, you know, how many times have we seen the example that the player that's on their deathbed sick, you know, it goes out there and has the best game of their life, you know, and, you know, or, or overcome some sort of adversity in the fourth quarter. I think those are things that we can, you know, that we have an innate ability to be able to coach somehow, some way, um, that either you, not just us, but anybody, you know, a, a person has, I think that's a quality that you have to have, uh, to be a great coach, you know? And, and I think where we need to continue to challenge ourselves is just because we may be good in that, we may be good at the, the human side of it. You know, we also need to be able to explain and why we do what we do and teach our, you know, teach up and teach down what we're doing. No, that's that's awesome. I couldn't agree more with that. And it's funny because, you know, Brinks just walked in and out like three times and he just spent a couple days or at least a day uh, with Gittleson up in Michigan. And he sent some quotes that, that Gittleson sent to him. And, and one of them it, it hits it right on the head where, you know, there's no sense in calculating the probability of chance if something happens after it already happens, you know, talking about all these things, like if you can't get them to do stuff, like there's no point in trying to figure out what the results are going to be or what your GPS would be with this or that, if you can't get them to do stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, I do think that there needs to be that, that share between the two. And I do think that the two can pair very well together in that as well, when it comes to the whys with the what's and bringing it all together. 
And I do think that that's why we're starting to see more and more success um, from, from other countries because they're starting to learn that motivational aspect from, from what we do and they're pulling in not even just the trendy sports science stuff, like, like what you're saying, like legitimate sciences and actually treating the work like it's an experiment. Yeah, I think it, I mean, it's much easier to teach the science than it is to teach somebody that can to, to relate with humans, you know, and I think, you know, that's maybe where we're seeing a lot of mistakes that are being made by some of these professional teams where they're bringing in maybe a soccer, you know, a high performance director over to work and be the, the NBA you know, high performance manager. And they just they, they don't have experience with the sport. They don't have an, a, an understanding of the players, you know, and um you know, and, and, and to me, I, again, I don't think you can be great at, at being a strength coach unless you've played the sport. I think you can be a very good strength coach, but I don't think you can be great unless you've understood what those stresses and how you've you know, how you deal and handle being in front of 80,000 people that hate your guts. You know, unless you've experienced that as an NFL you know, football player, you don't understand what it means to be an NFL strength coach, you know, in my opinion. Um, but that said, I think. Uh, you know, what I like to do, I think it's more, you know, it was an important lesson for me early in my career where, you know, I, I am very much that guy that likes to be up front. I like to pound my chest. I like to, I, you know, I can lead men and women to do what I want them to do. That, that comes fairly natural to me. Um, but when it comes to those, those details, that was something that I really struggled with, you know? And so early in my career, I hired a bunch of people like me because I thought, you know, hey, those you know those those are good strength coaches. You know, so I hired you know Frank Winchick, Winchick at, at Virginia, and I hired uh, Kaz Kazadi at Baylor, and and both have gone on to be phenomenal leaders and phenomenal strength coaches. But we were three lions, you know, in a in a cage. You know, and anytime you put three lions in a cage, you're gonna have fight. You know, fighting. And and what I had to learn was, you know, there's a there's a personality test by Gary Smiley. And either you're a retriever, and you and you have uh, straight. All of them have strengths and weaknesses. They all they have positive and negative qualities. So that lion, they pound their chest. They like to be in front. I can be in front of a thousand people, no problem, you know. But when it comes to the details, that's my that's my issue, right? Versus the beaver, very meticulous. They're going to put every de- you know every you know every stick in the right spot, and they're going to have twenty different to do lists. But that's not the person you want freaking inspiring people to, to charge the hill, right? Um, you got your retriever that is your lead by example, you know, um, person that, you know, they, they don't want the they don't want the fame, they don't want the limelight, they don't want the attention. They're gonna want their actions to to send, you know, to send the message. And they're just gonna be the the loyal soldier. Um, but they're not again, they're not they're not gonna be the one that you want to give the inspiring speech either. And then you have your otters, your playful one, right? They're going to be, they're going to be dancing with the players. It could have been the freaking worst day in the world. They're still going to have a smile on their face. You know, they can create energy when there is none. But that's not the person you want, you know, dealing with your discipline, you know. And so, what I learned is that you have to have all those qualities, right? And so, if I'm, you know, if I'm maybe not as strong in science, you know, then I want to better. I want to make sure that I have that beaver. That that's all there. You know, there. You know, like we had a, a employee, you know, a, a coach that I had on my staff, Chris Roof, who, who went on to to Baylor. That I mean, that's him, man. That's he's freaking. He is so smart, and he he likes looking at spreadsheets for twenty hours a day. You know, mm-hmm. you know. Whereas I, I, you know, if I'm in my office, I hate it. You know, I want to be on the floor. Um, so I think it's the same thing. I think if you're if you're to your point, if you're if you're building a team and maybe you're not as strong in the science, and you better have somebody on your staff that's strong in the science. Or if you're strong in the science and you and, and maybe weaker in the the human element, you better have somebody on your staff that can reach the, the players. No doubt, no doubt. And I love that. I've heard you talk about that before. I, I love like because knowing a bunch of those guys like sitting here and like being like like as soon as you said Chris's name it was like oh yeah yeah I, you know and you know with Wintrick right down the street I've been lucky to sit in a room with him for a bit and it's like yeah I mean like like that They're that, late, yeah that could have been a lot of heat in that room man like oh, I, yeah cause I mean I had cause flipping over his table one day you know he's so he's so mad at me yeah like you know 
Um, but I know, bet those lifts were freaking. I bet that they those things were hype. I mean, I bet people oh, were we going. Had, we had, yeah, we had we had, you know, and, and all of my staff members have been fantastic. Every single one of them, you know, and and I've been very fortunate. I mean. You know, Jake Biting with the Houston Astros just won the World Series as a former intern. You know, Derek Millender with the Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron strength coach, a former intern. You know, we've had some great staff members and I've taken from all of them, but it's taken me 20 plus years of of learning the fact that I, I don't have all the answers and I don't have all the, you know, and I, I can't reach everybody and not everybody's going to respond to me, you know, and I think that's an, that's the important lesson I think from all this is be it different cultures, be it different ethnicities, be it different whatever. Um, you know, we're not gonna we got our job is to make sure that we surround ourselves with the people that can reach all of our athletes. And if we can't do that, in, you know, just in over ourselves, we have to make sure that we have people around them that do that can. You know. Well, you know, and, and then following up on the culture aspect of that, then since you been to just a vast array of places that was something Mulatton brought up it'll be a few shows from now is that that's one thing he wished he looked into more and that was how these different cultures respond whether it be to criticism or, or whatever have you noticed that interaction being different and and if so could do you have any examples you'd be willing to share where coaches different ways worked in one corner of the world versus another like legitimately in this situation? Yeah, I think, you know, my, at least my experiences have been um, where, you know, and this is what I love about strength and conditioning and what I love about sport is it's, it's the great equalizer. It's the, everybody has similar goals and they all want to win championships and they all understand that there's a level of amount of hard work that does that and, and different things. I think, um, you know, Mladen actually, and him and I were in a, a a pizza shop in freaking Poland, and he was telling me about this book that he read. He probably mentioned it, but he thought it, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. But essentially, it equated different cultures to different types of fruit, mm-hmm. and and you know, um, you know, the Americans are like peaches, where we're soft on the outside but hard on the inside, so you don't really know what we're thinking. Versus some cultures that are like a grapefruit, where they're hard on the outside and soft in the middle, and you know, I think there is a level of figuring out, you know, like, I mean, it, especially in like the communist type countries, there's a, there's a hard exterior that you have to break through. Um, the good news for us, and I think the world is that sport kind of gets through that pretty quick. It can penetrate that pretty fast. And even the same thing, even where we're kind of, you know, we might be smiling on the outside, but being like, I hate your freaking guts on the inside as Americans sometimes, you know, we can, we all have a level of respect for another athlete from another country and, mm-hmm. you know, a competitor or something like that. And so, I mean, like I said, at the very beginning, I think there's a lot more similarities than there are differences. I think, you know, the, the, the challenge that I've faced having worked with athletes now in a lot of different countries has been like, when you don't speak the language, how good of a coach are you then? You know, you know, when you take out that auditory, you know, can you can you provide visual demonstration? Can you can you get them in a kinesthetic situation where they can feel what you're wanting them to accomplish? And you know, I you know I, I go back to when I was in China for the first time and I had to lead. I thought I went in there thinking I had to do, I think three lectures and two practicals or something. I can't remember exactly what it was. And I thought going in, I was like, man, the freaking these lectures are going to be hard. You know, how do I drive this message? You know. And then I thought, practicals, that'll be easy. I'll just show them and freaking let's go. And it was actually the reverse. You know, the lectures were extremely easy because I was able to collect my thoughts as they were translating, you know, versus I'm leading the speed presentation. And, and as they take off and I'm saying, hey, get your elbows in and your chest, you know, your chest up and you get at a 45 degree angle and don't cross the midline and no axle rotation. All the, I'm giving all these cues. And then all of a sudden it's like 15 minutes later, I hear blah, 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 you know, and it's. They're interpreting it 15 minutes later, and and it's like, holy crap! I gotta, how am I gonna do this? You know, and you you find out how good of a coach you are in those types of moments. I think than the other way around, and I think that's. Um, I actually just you know before we shot this, I shot a podcast on my podcast uh, with Sam uh, Gardner, who's the, mm-hmm. the, the Paralympic um, for, for Team USA, and and we were talking about you know when you take out one of those sensory type of ways to coach you know 
how good are you in the others or, or how heightened that can be in athletes. And I think we have an obligation, whether it be in a, in, with our own athletes or with athletes around the world, to um, to coach all three of those, you know, visually, auditorily, kinesthetically, you know, and we should be doing that on a daily basis. Oh, no doubt. Sam, Sam's a rock star too, man. He's, he's, uh, so, he's super smart. Oh, yeah. And then doing amazing work with those men and women out in California. So I guess then, when, when you go back at it, how has, piggybacking that, how, how have, have these world travels made Mac a better coach? Yeah, I mean, I think I'd start with that. Obviously, I've had to learn to, to heighten my abilities in coaching, not just with auditory, with commands and whatnot. You know, I've had to I've had to create demonstra- you know visual demonstra- uh, cues and and auditory or kinesthetic cues. I think it's 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 allowed me patience, it taught me patience. Where, you know, if they don't get it right away, I can't get on them because it's a failure on my part. I think sometimes even with our own athletes, you know, we may be going after them and they may still speak English, you know, but, you know, we may have been raised differently. We may have been, you know, uh, you know, we may respond differently to different external stimulus, you know, and, and so in that way, we're not speaking the same language. And so sometimes, again, it's not their job. It, it Partially it's their job, but when you're dealing with college athletes, high school athletes, you know, they don't have the maturity yet to, to understand that, you know, but it's our job. Ultimately, we're the professionals, we're the adult to reach them and not the other way around, you know? And so I think patience is, has been something. Um, and I think just, um, having, um, an appreciation for all the resources that we have available to us. I mean, Laden, you know, I remember sending him a copy of my book way back when, because it would have cost him like 60 bucks to get the book, you know, um, shipped to him and, and, you know, uh, Serbia, and here's a guy that is every bit as hungry to learn as you and I, maybe more more well read than even you and I. Mm-hmm. And yet this guy's having to pay triple the prices that we do to get some of the same resources, you know. And and so when I see that from other countries, the lack of resources. I mean, you know, I walked in when we were in the Ukraine uh, adopting our kids. I went to the Olympic Training Center, and you know, here's uh, one of the countries that's one of the elite in the world at weightlifting. And they've got, you know, freaking cracked plywood down and mismatched bumpers and, you know, maybe, a, maybe an Alico bar, you know, and these guys are outlifting us any day of the week, you know, um, and, you know, this is their Olympic training center, you know, and so I think we, you know, there's an appreciation there that I've found for what we have, the resources we have, but also an education in that, man, we can do it with a, a far less and if we're just as hungry, you know, and, and we got some of the best athletes in the world. We have some of the best coaches in the world. There's a lot of people that wish and point to the way that we're doing things too. But um, it's just like when I worked with special forces, those guys you would think are the most, you know, they're some of the biggest studs in the world. Right. But physically, I've, you know, probably, you know, my athletes at the lower level schools that I've been at have had better athletes than those special operators, you know, but mentally they're better than any pro athlete that I've ever been around, you know? And, um, I think it's the same way we can learn from seeing these other countries, what they're able to do with limited resources that we need to, you know, we need to raise and elevate our game and, and respect the fact that we have those resources. Oh, no doubt. He brought that up too. When we spoke, you know, that how, how we have no idea how lucky we are, you know? And it's like, it, you know, when I was in China training the college basketball team that I got the, to spend the six weeks with, like, there were two, like, horse mats in the whole weight room. The rest was dirt. Yeah. And, like, mismatched plates. Like, there was, we had one bar that was straight. They had eight bars. And there was, like, an offset squat stand. That would never, no matter what, they weren't the same height. And right. You counted up seven on the left and seven on the right. The one of them was still like three quarters of an inch higher than the other. Yeah. And it's like, so we're, I'm like, you know what I'm doing? I'm sitting there like digging a hole. I'm like, all right. So I just got to get this one a little lower than the other one. 
Right. You know, these kids are staring at me like, what is this guy <laughs> doing? <laughs> but yeah, like, it, it does. And you tack that on with not understanding what they're saying or them understanding what you're saying. Because even though people say most of the world speaks English, it just so happens that all the people that you're going to work with have no idea what's coming out of your mouth. Right. Um, well, that's, that's the number one thing that I've, I've just said this the other day, that that's the number one thing that I've taken away um, from the travels has been that everywhere I've gone, most almost everybody that I've dealt with has, has some level of understanding of English. And I, I can barely speak one word in a lot of these countries. You know, and, and it just, uh, again, I, I mean, to me, it's just motivated me to educate myself more, to try to be more worldly, to try to understand other people's cultures. And, you know, again, seeing that other people, they have the same goals and aspirations and commitment and, um, and respect for sport that, that we do and uh, are doing it with far less. It's, it's extremely motivating to me, you know, and, and um and then, you know, you look and you combine that with a sincere passion for learning um, from anybody and everybody. I, I think that that's, you know, it's inspiring in a lot of ways. And so, um, you know, I'd love to say that we're the freaking superior in so many ways. And, and in a lot of ways we are, you know, um, but um, but I think that the gap is closing. The world is getting smaller. And if we're going to continue to grow as a profession, which is ultimately how we stay prof- as professionals, you know, how we sit, you know, as we continue to stay as a profession, um, we're going to have to enhance um, our own knowledge, but also the ones around us that are making decisions. No, a hundred percent. And Mac, that's, that's an awesome point to leave it on right there, brother. I can't thank you enough for spending the time listening, man. This is killer stuff. And like I said in the beginning, this has been a long time coming. I'm glad we could finally get it down here. Cause you know, the, where in the world is Coach Mac could be <laughs> its own weekly podcast? And it's, it's true. Uh, it's killer, man. And I can't appreciate, I can't say thank you enough and, and, and let you know how much I appreciate everything you're doing for us and, and everywhere and what you're bringing back to this country and selfishly what you're sharing with me uh, that I'm not going to share with everybody else. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it is, man. It, it, what you're doing is, is making us better. And I, and I can't thank you enough, bro. I appreciate that. That's all I've I've had phenomenal um, teachers in my career that that poured into me. I've had f- phenomenal friends like yourself that have poured into me in the years, and um, I, I feel obligated, uh, you know, to share and to to give, and and, uh, and hopefully we all feel that way. And so, thanks so much, man. Well, appreciate you being on, Mac. We'll have this up real soon, brother. Cool. Yeah, man. And a huge thank you to Ron McKeefrey for spending the time with us to talk today. Guys, as always, you know, with Mac, open, honest, candid, just open book sharing. Can't thank him enough for spending the time with us and, and sharing, you know, all of his experiences that he's he's seen in these, in these months of travel with play. It's, it's really, really fascinating to me. And it, it's really awesome to hear not just how well he's doing, but how much he's enjoying this new challenge that he's part of with, with the company. So kudos to, to Coach Mac for being so open, honest, and candid with us. Can't thank him enough for that. And guys, as always, with everything that we do here, if you enjoyed the talk, please share it through the social media outlet of your choice, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it may be. And you know what, guys? If you know anybody that individually could take something from this talk, tweet it at them. Tag them on the post on Facebook. Send it to them in an email, whatever it may be. Again, we're just trying to get the best information out to all the great coaches out there that we can. And as always, guys, thank you for everything you do for us here at Central Virginia Sport Performance. We will be back next week with another awesome guest. We will see you then.